anticipating that New York City housing market is crashing all over the country in New York City and right here on Staten Island. It's been a long waiting time for you guys. If you were in the market to buy and you were hoping the prices are going to go down or if you were thinking of selling and catching the wave and ride for the highest possible sale price for your home. I don't know if the news that I'm going to share with you today is going to make you happy or disappoint you at this point, really. At this time, as we sit here and discussing, the interest rates are already like at 8%. Technically and logically, this would mean that home affordability is declining and to get to this point where it is now going to turn and turn from the seller's market to a buyer's market. And so today we're going to go over a few important things and look at the New York State housing statistics, followed by the Staten Island housing statistics and the New Jersey housing statistics because we can determine what we can expect in the coming months. And so higher mortgage rates lead to a lower home price. Logically, if we think about it as if one goes up, the other must fall and vice versa. But is it actually true? To see if it's true, we're going to take a look at this graph that's going to show us many time periods when both the interest rate and home prices went up at the same time. Going back to 1983, interest rates went up and at the same time, real estate values went up by 6.6%. If you go to 1987, interest rates went up from 9.04% to 11.26%. And during that time, real estate home values went up by 5.2%. Now, let's move ahead to 1993. The interest rates in October to December of 1994 went up 9.20% and during that period of time, home values went up by 1.2%. Now let's jump to April 1999. The interest rates were 6.92% and they went up to 8.52% in May 2000 and real estate values increased by 10.9%. So yes, it's logical to say that when the interest rates go up, it will put pressure on home prices. Prospective buyers will not be able to afford as much and that will be forcing the prices to lower. So let's see how this is playing out and what's happening in New York State and then we will jump to what's happening in Staten Island, New York and then we'll take a look at what's happening in New Jersey. So quarter three of 2022, data taken from NYSAR, New York State Association of Realtors, and the data shows us that affordability challenges and economic uncertainty caused by market activity to cool during what is typically a very busy time in real estate, which is quarter number three. As we sit here today, the mortgage rates are like 8% right now, and they are two and a half times more three times more than they were just a little while ago in the beginning of the year. The pending sales in New York State were down by 9.8%. The closed sales in New York State decreased by 10.9%. And the inventory, which is homes that are currently for sale, went down 14.4%, but prices gazed upward as the median sale price was up by 5% to $400,000. And the days on the market went down by 10.9% to 41 days. Month supply of inventory was down 8.3% to 3.3 months supply. Now, let me just mention to you that when we talk about month supply of inventory, anytime we are at six months or lower, it is always considered to be a seller's market. Now, let's see what's happening on Staten Island. As of October data, new listings on Staten Island increased 22.9%, the pending sales were down 37.5%, inventory levels fell 10.5%. So prices continue to gain traction. The median sale price on Staten Island now increased by 5.5% and now it is $675,000. 
the days on the market went up 5.6%. So it takes longer now to sell a house on Staten Island. It is now at an average of 75 days. The month's supply of inventory was also up by 8.4% to 4.1 months supply. Same thing, we're still under six months of supply, thus keeping us at a seller's market on Staten Island as well. Now let's check what's going on in New Jersey. The single family homes were down. The closed sales were down 14.7%. The townhouse and condo closed sales were down 16.6%. And the adult community closed sales were down by 2.9% but the single family median sale price went up by 8.2%. It is now at $476,000. The townhouses and condos median sale price also increased by 9.5% to now at $345,000. The adult community median sale price increased by 6.7% to now at $320,000. Affordability challenges have priced many buyers out of the market this year and the buyers that are able to succeed purchasing a home are finding themselves that the cost of home ownership have increased significantly with monthly mortgage payments more than 55% higher than a year ago. And that is according to the National Association of Realtors. The inventory remains lower than normal as the market continues to shift. Experts project Homes will begin to spend more days on the market and price growth will slow in months ahead. Okay, so what does this whole thing mean? If you watched any of my other videos, I always try to explain to not confuse a slower pace of homes being sold, lingering a little bit longer on the market. Don't confuse that with prices dropping. We have to look at the whole picture. We always have to remember that supply and demand is a big piece of the puzzle. The interesting thing is that we don't have enough homes available to supply all the demand that is real. Plus, the population in the United States has risen so much. So if you are waiting for the market to crash before you buy, I don't know if it's going to come here anytime soon or it may not even at all. And so. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you're new to this channel, make sure that you subscribe to it. I love making those videos for you because I feel it's important to understand what's happening in our local real estate market versus throwing just everything into the pot or not cooking soup. I still believe with all my heart that homeownership is the way to go. If you can afford the monthly payment, you should absolutely consider buying a house. Now, actually is a better time to buy a house than when the interest rates were lower. By the way, I just did a video about should you buy a house now or wait for a recession? It's a really good video for you to watch. So, because you have time to make a decision now about a particular home that you want to purchase. You have room for negotiations, you have a lot less competition than before, and if you don't have 20% down payment, you actually have an option to buy a home now because when the market was crazy like that, we just had one, home sellers didn't even want to consider an offer that was less than 20% down payment. I have to tell you, especially working with buyers during that time in New Jersey, it was extremely difficult to win a bid for my clients. Most of them had really good credits, really good job, really good income. They had only had say 10% down payment and it took a lot of commitment on my end and their end and dedication to get them into a home. So let me know what you think. Feel free to ask any questions. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell and I will see you on the next video.